Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we are on the session number four of this week. So we are going to end today the section number three. And also it is the last day for this uh, second week. Eh, vamos a terminar, ¿verdad? Lo que es esta semana hoy. Vamos a terminar con la sección número tres de nuestra plataforma. Y vamos a trabajar en lo que es el examen eh, medio, ¿verdad? We are going to work on the midterm. Eh, vamos a ir parte por parte, ¿verdad? También con los ejercicios que aparecen en el examen para que vayamos analizando, ¿verdad? Qué elementos eh, estamos utilizando en cada uno de esos ejercicios. So, we are going to begin with the first part, but let me eh, go to the document in which we were having some uh, some topics. We are going to make like a quick review. <clears throat> Vamos a hacer un análisis bastante rápido de, este, de los temas que hemos estado eh, viendo en estos días, ¿verdad? So, the topics that we have for this week, let me go to the beginning of this week. This one. Uh, we began the uh, the week talking about a job. We have a vocabulary referring to different jobs that we can uh, have. Um, and also, uh, we were talking about that um, we don't have the whole thing. No tenemos toda la lista completa, ¿verdad? Sino que utilizamos un número de uh, palabras para crear este vocabulario. Then, we were talking about the... Uh, different expressions that we can use when uh, someone asks us, uh, where do you work? También diferentes expresiones que se utilizan para responder la pregunta, ¿dónde trabajamos? Ya veíamos ahí el work at, el work in, el work for, el work with. Y teníamos algunos ejemplos de cómo se utiliza cada una de esas expresiones. Then we have the WH questions. That is another topic that is kind of relevant because we have different words that we can use to ask about a specific information. And in this case, we have different words. We can uh, see here uh, what are the different words that we can uh, use for uh, asking a specific information. Tenemos diferentes palabras, ya lo decíamos, para eh, preguntar acerca de algo en específico. Tenemos el what, que es para eh, preguntar sobre cosas, when, uh, eh, sobre el tiempo, where, about places, sobre los lugares, who, para hablar de las personas, whom, que se utiliza igual para hablar de personas, pero cuando es el objeto de nuestro verbo which, que se utiliza para hablar sobre decisiones. <laughs> Then we have whose, que se usa para hablar sobre posiciones. Then, Then we have how eh, to talk about manner or process, que son maneras y procesos. Y ahí teníamos también algunos ejemplos para uh, ver eso, esas preguntas. Luego, ¿cómo formábamos nosotros las WH questions? ¿Cómo formábamos nosotros las preguntas? Eh, ahí tenemos nuestras estructuras. Primero, con auxiliares. Segundo, eh, sin auxiliares. Y ahí están, ¿verdad? Nuestras estructuras. Obviamente empezamos con la WH word, con el auxiliar, con el sujeto, el main verb y el complemento. 
En el caso del auxiliar, pues cuando llevamos el auxiliar es cuando se lo agregamos. En este caso puede ser do, puede ser be, puede ser have, will, shall, and some words more. Y cuando no llevamos el auxiliar, nos pasamos directamente al verbo. Teníamos también algunos ejemplos con esas WH words. Then we have the reduction of do and does. That is the part of the pronunciation uh, in which you can see different, different um, questions in which we use the words do and does. And in that case, it's just to uh, talk kind of fast in that uh, moment. Then we have the conversation that is exciting in which we apply the information related to the jobs. And this one is the topic of the adjectives. Estuvimos viendo qué son los adjetivos, para qué los utilizamos. Algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos dos tipos de, eh, de adjetivos, que es el, el que se utiliza, ¿verdad? El attributive o el predicative en el cual vemos que uno se utiliza antes del nombre y el otro después del nombre. The last part is um, this uh, table in which we were talking about the different kind of jobs uh, using some adjectives. Tenemos los adjetivos boring, easy, dangerous, exciting, difficult, and stressful, que son diferentes eh, categorías que podíamos utilizar para expresar, ¿verdad?, algunos trabajos, cuáles eran los trabajos más aburridos, los más fáciles, los más peligrosos, los más emocionantes, los más difíciles y los más estresantes. Ahora, vamos a pasar a una, a una skill, a one macro skill. Vamos a pasar a, un, a, a una habilidad that we need to develop when we are learning a different language. Esas son habilidades que nosotros tenemos que eh, desarrollar no solo en inglés, sino que cuando estamos utilizando un idioma en específico, nosotros lo utilizamos de manera natural. But in this case, we need to focus on these uh, skills because um, through these uh, skills, we are going to gain information and we are going to Uh, apply the language when we are talking with someone else. Estas habilidades, pues obviamente nosotros eh, normalmente lo hacemos de manera inconsciente, ¿verdad? La aplicación de las, de las habilidades, pero cuando estamos aprendiendo un idioma nuevo, tenemos que ser conscientes del uso que les estamos dando. And I'm talking about the four macro skills, but in this case we are going to uh, use the uh, skill of the reading. Vamos a utilizar la habilidad de la lectura, pero no simplemente es leer un párrafo o leer una información. In this case, we are going to uh, talk about prediction and inferencing skills. Vamos a hablar de la predicción cuando leemos y también de inferir. Es como ir adivinando, ¿verdad? De qué trata eh, el fragmento o qué es lo que va a pasar más adelante. Y vamos a leer un artículo eh, sobre job profiles. Son eh, perfiles para trabajo. So, we are going to see the video in which we are going to listen someone reading the job profiles. Then we are going to um, make an analysis about the profiles. Vamos a ir eh, analizando un poco la información que aparecen en los, en los perfiles. Luego vamos a hacer lo que es el knowledge check, que se refiere a esa información, que es el 3.13. Vamos a contestar las preguntas que aparecen ahí. Y luego nos vamos a quedar trabajando un poco en lo que es el meter. Vamos a trabajar directamente en el examen. So, let me show you the video. And in this case, we are going to see or listen the uh, reading part twice. Vamos a escucharlo dos veces para luego eh, analizarlo, ¿verdad? Part by part. Y también vamos a hacer una actividad con esta lectura, pero eh, ya les voy a explicar de qué trata. So let's listen this information.
that uh, you can listen anything. Vamos a volverlo a poner porque eh, me dicen que no se escucha. Give me a second. Vamos a ver si se escucha ahora. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll develop... Ahora sí se escucha. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Prediction and inferencing skills after reading and discussing an article on job profiles. Reading. Job profiles. Lisa Parker has two jobs. She works as a waitress at night, but she's really an actress. During the day, she auditions for plays and television shows. Her schedule is difficult, and she's tired a lot, but she's following her dream. Lots of teenagers want John Blue's job. He plays video games for eight hours a day, and he gets paid for it. John is a video game tester for a big video game company. Is it ever boring? Never. John almost always wins. Becky Peck walks in the park every day for many hours, rain or shine. Becky is a professional dog walker. She walks dogs for other people. Sometimes she takes 20 dogs to the park at one time. Carlos Ruiz is a busy man. He plans lessons, grades homework, helps with after-school activities, and, of course, he teaches. His salary isn't great, but that's okay. His students like his class, so he's happy. We're going to listen again, but in this case, we are going to do it like a kind of um, it's low. Vamos a escucharlo con eh, detenimiento, pero esta vez va a ser un poco más despacio. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll develop prediction and inferencing skills after reading and discussing an article on job profiles. Reading job profiles. Lisa Parker has two jobs. She works as a waitress at night, but she's really an actress. During the day, she auditions for plays and television shows. Her schedule is difficult, and she's tired a lot. But she's following her dream. Lots of teenagers want John Blue's job. He plays video games for eight hours a day, and he gets paid for it. John is a video game tester for a big video game company. Is it ever boring? Never. John almost always wins. Becky Peck walks in the park every day for many hours, rain or shine. Becky is a professional dog walker. She walks dogs for other people. Sometimes she takes 20 dogs to the park at one time. Carlos Ruiz is a busy man. He plans lessons, grades homework, helps with after-school activities, and, of course, he teaches. His salary isn't great, but that's okay. His students like his class, so he's happy. Okay, we have there the, uh, the job profiles. I'm going to move the image to the document. Vamos a mover la imagen al documento para poder leerlo detenidamente. In this case, we are going to um, take a couple of minutes to read the information. Vamos a tratar de leer. Ya escuchamos, ¿verdad? Eh, la pronunciación, 
ya eh, vamos viendo de qué trata, ¿verdad? Eh, el job profile, pero vamos a leer también que es parte de lo que vamos a realizar. Así que en este caso voy a darles un par de minutos para que ustedes puedan leer la información que contiene cada uno de los job profiles. En este caso, es importante que vayamos leyendo y analizando de qué trata cada uno de esos job profiles, porque esa es la función, ¿verdad? De el reading part. We need to read, but also we need to understand what is the information about. ¿De qué trata la información? ¿Qué detalles puedo encontrar yo en esa información que estoy leyendo en este momento? That is the main reason or that is the purpose eh, that we have when we are reading some information. So you need to, to uh, read this uh, job profiles. Then we are going to uh, say something about uh, the profiles. And then we are going to uh, complete the, um, the knowledge check related to this part. Así que vamos a leer, vamos a, a tener un momento de lectura y luego uh, vamos a ir al knowledge check. Así que vamos a tener a couple of minutes. I think five minutes is enough. Cinco minutos para leer, ¿verdad? Los profiles, ver algunos detalles que aparecen ahí. Eh, detalles sobre los trabajos que realizan cada uno de ellos. Luego hacemos un pequeño análisis de ideas. Y por último vamos a ir al knowledge check para luego pasar ya a lo que es el meter. So we have five minutes to read and to analyze the information that we have on the job profiles.
Okay. In this case, we have the first uh, person here. We have Lisa Parker. You can tell me some details about the job that she performs. ¿Qué es lo que hace Lisa Park? Lisa has two jobs. Oh, she has two jobs. So she, she has, uh huh. She wore as a white dress at night. Uh huh. And she. But she really. She, is... uh, she auditioned for the television show. Ah, okay. Very good. Thank you. Muy bien, ahí están los detalles importantes, ¿verdad? She has two jobs and uh, in, at night she is a way, uh, yes, she is a waitress, but in reality she is an actress and she makes some auditions for plays and television shows. Así que Lisa es una mesera por las noches, pero en realidad ella es una actriz. Ella hace audiciones para obras de teatro y para la televisión. It says that her schedule is difficult and she's tired a lot, but she is following her dreams. Ella está cansada, ¿verdad? Porque tiene dos trabajos. Primero, ¿verdad? Hace las audiciones, va de un lugar a otro, practica y en la noche tiene que trabajar como mesera. <clears throat> está cansada, pero ella está siguiendo sus sueños. Now, we have John Blue. What is John Blue doing? ¿Qué es lo que hace John Blue? ¿De qué trabaja John Blue? He plays video games. Oh. Hours a day. Okay. This is the, um, we can say the teenager's dream. Es el sueño de los adolescentes. Porque él eh, juega videojuegos ocho horas al día. And it says that he gets paid for it. A él le pagan por eso. Eh, John is a video game tester for a big video game company. It is even boring. Never. John almost always win. Así que él es de los que prueba, ¿verdad? Los videojuegos. Son los que ven, ¿verdad? Los gráficos, si hay algún problema con alguna de las escenas, si la música, ¿verdad? Va acorde con lo que se está jugando. A lot of things. Y lo hace ocho horas diarias y dice que no se aburre. I don't think it is true because uh, in some cases, eh, being eight hours in, a, in the same place is kind of tiring. <coughs> Then we have Becky Peck. What is the job of Becky Peck? ¿Cuál es el trabajo de Becky? Okay. She is a professional dog walker. Very good. She walks dogs for other people. Sometimes she takes 20 uh, to the park at one time. Ella es una paseadora profesional de perros. Ella, pues, ese es su trabajo, ayuda a otras personas a sacar a pasear a sus perros y a veces lleva 20 perros al mismo tiempo al parque. And the last one, Carlos Ruiz. What is the job of Carlos Ruiz? ¿Qué hace Carlos? Oh, someone answered this. It's a teacher, very good. Carlos is a teacher. Uh, he plans lessons, grades, homework, help with after school activities, and of course, he teaches. His salary isn't great, but that is okay. His students like his class, so he's happy. Él tiene mucho trabajo, ¿verdad? Tiene que hacer sus planeaciones, tiene que eh, ponerles nota a los trabajos. Eh, ayuda con actividades después de la escuela 
y obviamente él enseña, ¿verdad? Está dando una clase en específico, no tiene un buen salario, pero dice que está bien con eso, y a sus estudiantes les gusta su clase, así que él está feliz. Ok. In this case, we are looking for details for um, the job profile, so we are like uh, searching for the kind of job, what uh, activities are they performing, all of that thing. Now, we are going to go to the platform again <coughs> because we are going to answer the knowledge check that we have here. That is the knowledge check 3.13. That is this one. We are going to read the article. We already read the article and it says, who do you think might say these things? ¿Quién creen ustedes que puede decir estas cosas? Ya leímos el artículo, así que vamos a las respuestas. After I win, I take a break. Después de, que, de, de ganar, voy a tomarme un descanso. Someone said, John Blue. Ok. John Blue. Vamos a ver la siguiente. I don't usually work in the summer. Normalmente no trabajo en verano. ¿Quién podría ser? Lisa Park, John Blue, Becky Peck, o Carlos Ruiz. Carlos Ruiz. Ok, let's see. Vamos a ir anotando por acá. Luego tenemos en el número 3. The restaurant closes late, around 2 a.m. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck, o Carlos Ruiz. Lisa Parker, ok. Then, after work, my feet and my arms are tired. Después del trabajo, mis pies y mis manos o mis brazos están cansados. Lisa Parker, John Blue, Becky Peck o Carlos Ruiz. Becky Peck. Ok. Vamos a chequear. Ok. There are correct. Ahí están, ¿verdad? Tenemos todas correctas. Number one, John Blue. Number two, Carlos Ruiz. Number three, Lisa Parker. Y number four, is Becky Peck. Excellent, very good. Now, we are going to see the exercises that we have on the meter. Vamos a ir al examen. Vamos a ir resolviendo el examen. So, we have six different parts. Tenemos seis partes diferentes. Vamos a ir a un listening. Primero, voy a detener esto y lo voy a volver a compartir para que no haya problemas. Vamos a ir primero a listening, vamos a escucharlo dos veces y luego vamos a contestar. Vamos a movernos para una nueva ventana. Here. So, let's listen carefully. One. I really love our new house, Dan. What's your new house like, Julia? It's my dream house. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The bedrooms have big closets. Wow, three bedrooms. That sounds nice. Two. Yeah, I really love the house, but I need some furniture. What do you need? I need some things for the kitchen and the living room. What's in your living room now? Well, there are some chairs, but there isn't a sofa. Three. What do you need for the kitchen? Well, there's a refrigerator and a stove, but there's no microwave oven. Hmm. You know, I have a microwave oven, but I don't really use it. Do you want it? Yes, thanks. One. I really love our new house, Dan. What's your new house like, Julia? It's my dream house. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The bedrooms have big closets. Wow, three bedrooms. That sounds nice. Two. Yeah, I really love the house, but I need some furniture. What do you need? I need some things for the kitchen and the living room. What's in your living room now? Well, there are some chairs, but there isn't a sofa. Three. What do you need for the kitchen? Well, there's a refrigerator and a stove, but there's no microwave oven. Hmm. You know, 
I have a microwave oven, but I don't really use it. Do you want it? Yes, thanks. Okay, we have here the conversation. In this case, we have three different things and we are going to answer um, the correct answer. We are going to uh, look for the correct answer for the uh, statements that we have here. So, <clears throat> in the number one, there are no two or three bedrooms. Three. Three, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Number two, there are some chairs in the dining room, living room, or kitchen. Okay, living room. And number three, Julia needs a microwave oven, refrigerator, or a stove for the kitchen. <clears throat> No, very good, microwave oven. Very good, all of them are correct. Tenemos la primera parte. Let's see the second one. Yes. Uh -huh. Number two. We're going to complete the conversation. Complete the conversations, use the simple present of the verbs, uh, select the option that contains the words that uh, to complete the question and answer. Vamos a utilizar el presente simple, ¿verdad? Vamos a ponerlo por acá. Tenemos dos partes. We are going to have some, uh, a couple of minutes to think about the answer. Two minutes for each section. Vamos a tener dos o tres minutos para eh, pensar en nuestra respuesta. Y lo vamos a ir haciendo por secciones. So, Two or three minutes to think about the answer. Okay, let's see. Conversation number one. A, do have, does have, or do have. In this case, we have the, the same those, thing. Tell those me. have. Ah, those have. Does your apartment building have an elevator? Does have. Okay, vamos a ver. Number two, yes, it does, do, don't, or doesn't. Does, okay, it does. Very good. Conversation number two. Again, two or three minutes.
Okay, number two, conversation number two. We have here an answer. Uh, for the first one, we have do and have. And for the second one, no, they, does, do, doesn't, or don't. No, they do. Don't. Don't. Very good. Let's see. Okay, all of them are correct. Like this. Number one, doesn't have. Number two, do, uh, does. Number three, do and have. Number four, don't. Very good. Let's see the next one. Unscramble the sentences. In this case, we are going to the, uh, unscramble the sentences and we are going to write each sentence in the correct order. Vamos a descifrar esas tres oraciones que tenemos ahí y las vamos a eh, escribir en orden correcto. Vamos a tomarnos un par de minutos para analizar las oraciones y luego me van a dar sus respuestas. But we have a couple of minutes to think about the correct order of the statements.
Okay, we're going to give the answer for the unscrambled sentences. In the number one, what is the sentence? ¿Cómo dice la primera oración? Okay, I have something here. There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. Mm, -hmm. Let's see. Number two. <clears throat> Sentence number two. There are no pictures in the hall. Okay, number three. Okay, there aren't any curtains in the dining room. Okay, let's see. Okay, all of them are correct. There isn't a mirror in the bedroom. There are no pictures in the hall and there aren't any curtains in the dining room. Very good. Están correctas todas. Next one, part number four. We are going to select the correct words for each sentence. Vamos a seleccionar la palabra correcta para cada una de las oraciones. Tenemos tres, dos minutos para pensar. Luego me dan la respuesta. Okay, let's see the answer. I have something on the chat. And number one, we have a nurse. A nurse works in the hospital. <laughs> number two, a receptionist talks to people at a hotel. Okay. Number three, a judge sits all day. Okay, it says a judge. Let's see. And there are correct. Very good. Tenemos ahí nuestras opciones, ¿verdad? En el número uno es una enfermera. Número dos, receptionist, el recepcionista. Number three, and judge, un juez. <coughs> Let's see part number five. And we have one more part, una parte más. Um, select the questions to complete the conversation. Vamos a seleccionar, ¿verdad? La respuesta que mejor le quede a nuestra respuesta. Vamos a tener acá tres 
Eh, yes, just three. Así que vamos a analizar cuál es la mejor eh, opción y en un par de minutos ponemos nuestras respuestas. Ok, let's see. Vamos a ver. Tenemos en the number one, I work at a restaurant. At a restaurant. Trabajo en un restaurante. So in this case, we have three different options. How they like their jobs. Where do you work and what does he, he do? <coughs> and in this case, where do you work? Donde trabajas? Number two. He is a firefighter. We have three options. How they like their jobs. Where do you work and what does he do? En este caso, número dos. What does he do? ¿Qué hace él? Él es un bombero. Next one. Number three. They hate their jobs. Ellos odian sus trabajos. How do, how do they like their jobs? Where do you work and what does he do? Ellos odian su trabajo. ¿Cuál es la opción correcta que tenemos ahí? How do they like their jobs? Where do you work and what does he do? I have here on the chat one question. What does he do? Vamos a irnos con esa. Si alguien tiene una opción diferente, puede escribirla. Porque acá tenemos una mala. <coughs> That is the number three. So if someone has another option, can you give that option, please? How do they do their job? Ah, how do they like their jobs? Thank you very uh, much. So, I mean, ah, I'm sorry. That's my fault. Okay, in that case, it is correct. Está preguntando si a ellos les gusta su trabajo. Y ahí está la respuesta. Ellos odian su trabajo. That is the correct option. Now, we are going to see the last part of the, um, of the meter. Vamos a irnos a la última parte del examen. Tell me. Ah, don't worry. <clears throat> so, in this case, we are going to complete the conversations. 
We are going to select the verb be or have in each case. Vamos a escoger el verbo to be o el verbo have en cada uno de los casos. Así que vamos a tomarnos un par de minutos para ver uh, cuál es la eh, mejor opción para cada una de nuestras eh, oraciones. Aquí tenemos la conversación 1 y parte de la conversación 2. A couple of minutes and then you give me the answer for this eh, statement. Okay, let's see what are the answers for this part. For the conversation number one, what is the correct option? A singer, job, have an exciting, has an exciting, has an exciting, or have an exciting? Has an exciting, okay. And the number two, I disagree. I think a singer's job, and someone said here is boring. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it's boring. Conversation number two. A flight attendant have a stressful, has a stressful, or has an stressful job. Okay, has a stressful job. I agree, the next part, I agree, it is not stressful or is stressful. It's stressful. It's stressful, thank you. Conversation number three. Give me a second, give me a second. This is it. I'm so sorry. So, uh, we were saying, in the conversation number three, a cashier's job, el trabajo de un cajero, is easy or is not easy? It's easy. It's easy, okay? And the next one said, 
I disagree. A cashier's a cashier has a difficult, have a difficult, has a difficult, or have a difficult. Has a difficult. Has a difficult job. Okay, let's see the answers. Okay, we have all of them correct. So in this case, we have it in number one, has an exciting. Number two is boring. Number three um, has a stressful. Number four is stressful. Number five is easy. And the last one has a difficult. So in this case, we have completed the section number three and also the exam. Aquí ya está resuelta la parte tres y el examen. Para los que ya resolvieron todo eso, parte uno, dos, tres, y el examen, very good. For the others, eh, you need to do it because uh, you know that the work of this um, <clears throat> module is the platform. So you need to, to complete the platform eh, to have all of your work done. Para los que no han trabajado en la plataforma, deberían de ponerse al día. Al final, el tiempo pasa muy rápido y podemos quedarnos sin tiempo para resolver las actividades. No son actividades muy largas, como lo pueden ver, pero sí requieren un poco de tiempo. En este caso, como ya las hemos ido resolviendo, ustedes solo pueden ir marcando. Eh, para que no se atrasen, recuerden que esta es la segunda semana, la próxima es la semana número tres, tenemos una semana eh, donde no nos vamos a ver, y la siguiente es el final del módulo. Así que no nos vayamos a, a, a creer que vamos a tener mucho tiempo para resolverlo. Tenemos poco tiempo al final porque el tiempo pasa muy rápido. But this is the end of the, um, the session. We are going to see each other the next week on Monday. Nos vamos a ver el próximo lunes. Have a really good day. Have a really good weekend. And see you on Monday. <clears throat> I see you. See you. See you Monday. See you.